my fellow Dears Nerds, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, hi, I'm Roxana. In today's video, I'm going to be doing something different, something I've never done before. Um, I've, some, I've seen something similar like this done on um, Raron from the Disney Damsels uh, channel, but her video is different. My video is going to be different from her, the video that she did. Um, so basically I'm going to be talking about what exactly goes through a box swap on her video that she did. She showed you how she packed a, um, box swap, um, and she, sh um, showed everything that goes into, like, packing a box for a box swap. Um, I'm going to do something different and kind of go a little bit more deeper than that and give like behind the scenes um, information on what exactly is a box swap, what goes into a box swap, and all that stuff. Um, this video is going to be more helpful for YouTubers who are wanting to do box swaps or they want to host a box swap of their own but they don't know how um if you're someone that doesn't have a youtube channel you can still enjoy this video um so yeah so basically what is a box swap it's pretty much like a secret Santa type of deal um now there are two different ways a box swap can be done um it can be done one-on-one, -on -one, so it can be done with you and one other person and no one else. Um, and you just exchange your information, you give your preferences, um, you decide on the theming of the box, you decide what goes into the box, the um, spending limit, which typically everyone typically breaks. Um, and um you list all of your preferences uh which is why you've been seeing a lot of the um box swap tags that uh, Erica Dio Campo created going around so and that's more those videos are more geared towards as Disney YouTubers or YouTubers in general um to get to know our, you know, our friends in the community um, better and what their likes and dislikes are. Um, so I'm going to just give you guys the behind the scenes look of what an actual box swap is. Um, so anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, you can when it's just you and one other person you can basically talk directly to that person and ask them direct questions like what their favorite color is what their favorite park is what their favorite rides are what their favorite movies are their favorite characters um if they have any food or dietary any food allergies or any dietary restrictions um that's always important to know because in a lot of these box swaps, you know, we like to send snacks. Um, and so that's important information to know. Um, and then what we collect, what we don't collect, um, and things that we like and things that we don't like. I um I used to say just I'd be happy with whatever but now I'm starting to kind of I'm needing to like scale back and downsize my um collection so if I have you in a box swap or if I just feel like sending someone something you might see something that in your box that once belonged to me that I've showed in a video before. 
So if you get something from my personal collection, I am downsizing, so that's why. Um, so there's always like a preference of all of our favorites. Um, and then we might include a few non-Disney favorite um, items. So, and it's the same um, format for um, a group uh, box swap. With a group box swap, it's typically one person that's hosting it and that person will, you know, send messages asking, hey, I'm hosting a, a box swap during this time. Be, the post date will be on this day. You know, you would have to send out your box by this day. And then we all post our videos on the same day at the um, same time. Um, and I know you guys are thinking, Roxana, how does that work when everyone in the Disney community lives in different time zones? Not only different time zones, but like different states or different countries or what have you. We typically do it by um, Walt Disney World time because a lot of us are, um, Walt Disney World is um, basically our a home park to a lot of people. Um, so we'll go by like, okay, let's say 9 a.m. Walt Disney World time. So 9 a.m. Walt Disney World time is 8 a.m. my time because I'm in Chicago. Um, to someone in California that would be um, 6 a.m. Disneyland time so that's basically how we'll figure it out and then and if it's anyone that's in the group um, collab the like group box swap that lives um, overseas would have to figure out basically how f um, far ahead um, they are from Disney World as far as time-wise. Um, so with like a huge group, uh, I've been in box swaps with smaller groups. I've been in box swaps with larger groups. Um, it honestly depends on who is hosting. Um, the person is hosting will determine and the number of people they would want to ask to be a part of the swap and then um, they will have a cutoff date as to when they will stop allowing people to sign up for that swap. Um, so that person will go asking people on like um, on direct messages on Instagram. I've seen posts on um, Facebook so Facebook is a great great place to be asking people um, to be part of um, a YouTube swap there are um, there's a Disney youtuber um, Facebook group that um, is being run by Nina over at wrestling with Disney and I will have that in the description down below so if you are a Disney youtuber I will link that in the description down below um, for anyone that's not a part of that group. It's a really great group. It's a really great community. We're all very supportive of each other. We all give each other advice and every all that jazz and stuff. Anyways, and then with the person is hosting, they will... Um, be like, okay, here's a cutoff date as to when I would need to know if you want to do the swap or if you don't want to do the swap, which, you know, it's understandable. Um, times are rough, so people decide whether or not if they can financially do it. Um, and then that person will set the guidelines and per usual, everyone does not. Bailey, are you okay? I don't know. He's being weird. It's also late at night. And <laughs> the, the later it gets, the more weird he gets. Um, anyways, so that person will 
have a set of guidelines that typically everyone ignores. We're supposed to follow the guidelines and they'll say, okay, this is what the box is supposed to include and they'll have like a list of however many things the box is supposed to include and then they'll have a set budget and then once that deadline is met, um, no one else can join and then before that, before names get drawn, it's up to you to properly communicate to the host like, hey, I'm not able, if you're not able to do the swap anymore for whatever reason, you know, um, to properly communicate like, hey, something just came up, I'm no longer able to participate or whatever. Um, and you just quietly exit the chat and uh, leave it at that. And once names get drawn, typically, once names get drawn, every swap that I've been in, once names get drawn, they stop letting people um, drop the swap. Um, it's just because it's a pain, it's a really pain to like figure out where to move, where to move people around and stuff and um, yeah. And then, so you, a lot of the swaps I've been in, with the exception of like a few, a small handful, it's been a mystery. So you don't know who has, who you're getting a box from. All you know is that you are sending a box to someone. Um, I've sent box, the, and it's it's bound to happen where you're bound to send where you join so many different box swaps where you just end up sending um, a box to someone that you sent a box to before. Like I've gotten my partner channel's names a few times. Um, I've gotten other people's names in past swaps a few times, um, which is fine with me. I, you know, it just means I get to know them a little bit better. Do I like getting someone new? Yes, but you can't. You don't have a say as to how the name choosing process goes. Usually the name choosing process goes is determined to the person on who is hosting. Some people you will use like a random name generator, random name picker and like a Seeker Santa type of deal and they'll enter in all of the names onto that website and then um it will pair everybody up they'll you know hit a button and they'll that that website will randomly do you are you itchy are you done okay anyway so the website will randomly pair everybody up together and it does that website does not know who has already had who so um, it's I've done it that way before I've also done it where I randomly just draw literally draw names and I would write the names down on a notebook and then whoever name I end up pulling that's going to be that person's partner um and then so on and so I just go down the list and so on and so forth um I think only a few times I've had the same people be partnered up together but that's only because I like um I I don't always do it on purpose sometimes I do it on purpose um other times I don't do it on purpose um Sometimes it just the way it ends up happening is I would like, let's say I pull Ashley's name and then Ashley, and then let's say I pull Holly's name. So Ashley will be gifting to Holly. And then when I pull Holly's name, you know, I end up pulling Ashley's name. So they end up gifting to each other. I've seen it happen. A few times I've seen it happen with um I think it happened to Kat a few times and it happened to the Luffersons 
and a few others it happens where you end up where you, the person you had ends up having your name that ends up that occasionally does happen so it's just like it's just a sometimes um whoever's hosting kind of does it just to see how well <laughs> you actually know the person um so um yeah and then once names get drawn you cannot say who you have basically until the day that up until the day where you um everyone posts their videos bailey okay you're you need a relax bailey's gonna join the video now because he clearly wants to make himself known by making sound <laughs> Anyways, where was I going? So many distractions. Yes, I'm talking about you. Um, you know, and it happens. Like, not everyone that does box swaps is aware of who you already had and who you haven't had. Um, it just it uh, different people, different people who have hosted. Um, box swaps have a different system and a different way of drawing names. Um, I have my system that works for me. Um, Christy from Christy's Corner, she is another person to host. She has her system that works for her. Um, Tony and Mary from the Siskateers, they have their system that works for them. So whatever name drawing system that works best um, for you, whether if you enter a names on a website and have the website randomly draw names, or if you draw names yourself, either way works. I've done it both ways. Um, and yeah, th there's just no way there you're bound to at some point with the number of swaps people join, you're bound to get the same person at some point again. Um, there's no way of avoiding un getting a repeat name given to you in different swaps. Um, I've had that happen to me a few times. No big deal, it, it's just, it gives me a chance to get to know that person better. Um, so then, once everyone has their name, their their person that they've been assigned, um, a lot of them it's a mystery, so you you keep that person to yourself. Um, there's been a few swaps that I've been in where I were um, the partners knew who had who, um, but that that's a rare thing that rare rarely happens. Excuse me. Um, and then after all the names have been drawn and you have the um, preferences filled out and the criteria of what needs to be in the box and then the budget limit, um, then you are pretty much free to, like, I guess, internet stock <laughs> that person. And then find different things that they would like and curate a box to their liking based on their preferences and shop. <laughs> a lot of people just continue on shopping. A lot of people go over the budget. A lot of people pretty much throw the guidelines out and just buy things that they think that person would like. I will admit I've done that so many times. Although I'm, I want to try and get better with actually sticking with the limits, so um, that definitely will be happening sometime in the future. Um, and then usually when and then the host will be like, before you send your box, make sure on the box you write what that this what's the sw that this box is for a swap and then you would write the name of the swap on the box um a lot of people like to decorate the boxes i think that's 
that's just a cute personal added bonus touch to it. A lot of people like to write um, a handwritten note or make a card themselves. Um, or a lot of people would, if for those of us who are really crafty, would make a few things um, for our person to kind of uh, save money. Um, I've made ears for my people. Um, I've I do plan as it gets closer to Vlogmas, I'll probably make or ornaments and ears. Um, just because making that stuff is a little bit cheaper than actually buying it sometimes. Um, I, people get really crafty with box swaps. They've made a whole bunch of different... I've seen people make a whole bunch of different things like um, tumblers, t-shirts, you name it. I've People get really creative and really crafty with their um boxes and yeah and then you pretty much um you and you have the option to either ask the host for your person's address or people just fill the ad their uh address that they want the box being sent to with their preferences um so that their per person that they get assigned has it already um i've done it both ways where you ask the host for for your for the person's address and i also would i've also done it where you included the address with your preferences um i prefer doing it adding it with the preferences it just makes it easier but i understand for privacy reasons not everyone feels comfortable giving out the address and we'll just simply give the address when the per when the person's ready to send out the box that's under seminal too um everyone's got their preferences as to whether or not to include the ad their address with their preferences or to just give it to the host and be like hey when my person's ready to send to to send my box just this is the address um and that's fine too uh there's no problem with that either um so that's basically like the behind the scenes of what goes how to put together a uh, box swap you know you've got preferences you've got um a criteria as to what needs to go in the box and then you've got a budget limit um, as to what the max amount of dollars that people um, can spend on the box which a lot of people tend to go over um, so that's pretty much how a box swap gets done um, and that's pretty much how I do a box swap that's how um, I've seen other people do box swaps I they're Honestly, there, you can't. There's no real strict rules with um, box swaps unless the person, unless there's like some sort of challenge added onto um, the box swap. Like you had to spend, you have to be within the spending limit, and you have to, you know, like uh, I've been in a um, dollar store box swap and that was challenging I, i'm not gonna like that one <laughs> kind of gave me anxiety it was like stressing over that one um so stuff like that would have limits to it anyways um i really hope this helps th those who are looking to maybe host a box swap sometime in the future or those who just enjoy watching box swaps and you're kind of curious to see what the behind the scenes looks like and yeah also if you want to see how I made my um here hold on let me get closer so these are my newest ears that I've made these are my um splash mountain ears 
and the fabric, the Splash Mountain fabric came from um, Danita over at Absolutely Fabby Years. The bow I got from um, Hobby Lobby. Um, anyways, if you guys want to see a DIY on these um, ears, comment down below. They're going to make their way to uh, my Etsy, my Etsy shop soon. <sighs> I can't talk. Um, it's been a long day. And I do plan on, well, the ones that I'm wearing, I'm keeping for myself, but I do plan on selling them at, um, soon. Uh, I just need to get the time. <laughs> Work is taking up a lot of my time. Anyways, I'll see you lovely Disney nerds in my next video. Bye, guys.